Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. I know I did a talking head video just a few days ago, but there's really a lot to talk about. I mean, releases, leaks, a lot to go over. Starting with terrible news. AMD's throwing in the towel. They released two new GPUs and their next gaming GPU gets listed. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, in an update to a recent story I did that basically shows GPU prices may soon start skyrocketing yet again. I mean, we're talking potentially even nearly as bad as it was during the pandemic with cryptocurrency and all of that stuff. In this update, Nvidia actually talks about why they're having these supply issues. And at first, it may sound good, but it's not. Either way, as you can see down here, it says, this is from Tom's Hardware, NVIDIA's Vice President and General Manager of HPC Gear DGX Systems has come forward to set the record straight on where exactly the company's GPU volume issues lie. Don't forget that I recently discussed a story over in China that saw some H800, which is technically NVIDIA's H100, but that's what they call them in China. Either way, it saw them getting as high as $70,000 per unit. So they definitely aren't able to keep up with demand. Well, according to Boyle, the problem doesn't come from NVIDIA miscalculating demand on wafer yields, issues at its manufacturing partner, TSMC, anything like that. Instead, it's apparently a bottleneck in the actual chip packaging steps that come after the wafers are made. As it says right here, NVIDIA's H-Class GPUs make use of TSMC's 2.5D chip on wafer on substrate packaging technology, a multi-step, high-precision engineering step whose complexity slows down the number of GPUs that can be assembled at a given time frame. This can disproportionately impact supply. The delta between the number of GPUs required and those available even led Elon Musk to say that they were proving, quote, harder to acquire than drugs. So yeah, there definitely is a shortage. And at least in one way with this news, it's sort of good in that this isn't an issue with the wafer, with the die of the chip itself. And it's technically only an issue with NVIDIA's H-Class GPUs. So, so it's not like NVIDIA can take the chips from the gaming GPUs and just port them over to the H100 GPUs and just make H100s out of them. This is something specific to the H100 that doesn't really affect gaming GPUs. But as I said a second ago, this still isn't really good news. And the reason goes back to that recent story. Basically, companies that rely on GPUs for AI are now buying gaming GPUs. So even though Nvidia can't technically take the gaming GPUs to fit them in H100, so then we have less supply of gaming GPUs, but AI companies can just buy the gaming GPUs outright and then use those for AI. Basically, this still looks really, really bad. And next up for today, while actually sort of following on that bad news front, According to the well-known leaker Kepler, the Navi 4 lineup will not have any high-end GPUs. He said, think of it like RDNA 1 or the Polaris generation. And you can see down here, video card said, how credible is this information? And Kepler said that they heard from three sources. Not only that, but I actually found in this thread, I don't have it right here, but Red Gaming Tech seems to be hearing the exact same thing. Basically, it's sounding like if this is right, AMD's effectively giving up the position to high-end GPUs to NVIDIA. We obviously know that their 7900 XTX, while very powerful, absolutely is not as powerful as NVIDIA's RTX 4090. So if this is right, their RX 8000 GPUs, while I'm sure will be a fairly large boost over their RX 7000 GPUs, they aren't going to really be competing in the high end. And that's, of course, a massive bummer just because this will give NVIDIA the ability to raise prices effectively as high as they want for their highest end GPUs. This is the importance of having competition in the marketplace. Now, with that said, I will at least say they do mention the Polaris generation, and I will say that if they are able to do something that they were able to do with, say, their RX 480, 580 GPUs, we could get really great price to performance in the mid-range, but for those who are looking at higher end GPUs, you may end up being stuck with NVIDIA. With that said, AMD has announced two new Radeon Pro series GPUs. 
specifically their Pro W7500 and W7600. And when it comes to the specs, starting things off, you'll see the W7500 has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, so not all that much, but you'll see that it is a fairly decent boost over last gen. It has DisplayPort 2.1, 28 CUs for a peak single precision, which is FP32 of 12 teraflops, AV1 encode and decode, and 70 watt total board power. Then we look at the W7600, once again, eight gigabytes of GDDR6. I definitely think that they should have upped this at least a little bit. Then DisplayPort 2.1, 32 CUs for 20 teraflops of single precision compute. And this one has a total board power of 130 watts. Now, one thing that is pretty interesting is that they actually compare it to last gen, and you can certainly see that it is a fairly decent boost. Starting things off, of course, last gen, the W6600 RDNA 2. These are both built on their newest RDNA 3 architecture, TSMC 7 nanometer versus 6 nanometers. But you will notice that the compute units and ray accelerators for the W7500 is the same as last gen, but they get quite a bit more AI accelerators, 56 versus 28. And this does give it at least a bit of a boost over the 6600, though of course this is the 7500. So it is still beating it with 12 teraflops of single precision compute versus 10. Of course, the memory is the same all the way across, which is really why I think they should have upped that a bit. Memory speed is actually less for the W7500, but more for the W7600. And of course, the single precision compute jumped from 10 for the 6600 to 20 for the 7600. So we are talking double compute performance, so certainly a pretty decent boost over last gen. And even with double the compute, it's at the same 130 watt TBP. Of course, the display port goes from 1.4a to 2.1. And then when we look at price, we can actually see that the W7600 is in fact slightly cheaper than the 6600. And of course, the 7500 is quite a bit cheaper than that. So the W7600, $599, W7500, $429. Not bad at all. Fairly decent jump. Nothing too impressive. Like I said, I, I really wish that they would have included more memory, maybe 12 gigabytes. I definitely think that would have looked way better. As far as release, these are already available. They became available on August 3rd. And lastly for today, it looks like PowerColor made a really big oopsie. If you saw my last video, to which of course, if you aren't subscribed, please do that. I definitely appreciate that. I appreciate all of my subscribers. Once again, thanks so much for watching these videos. But yeah, if you saw that video, you know that AMD made it official that they are launching more RX 7000 GPUs this quarter. Well, it looks like at least one of those, as I suggested in my last video, is the RX 7800 XT. And the reason we know that is because power color apparently mistakenly because they have since taken it down but they actually listed the gpu you can see right here we have the rx 7800 xt i'll get to specs in just a second and how it looks it looks very similar to the this is the 7900 xt you can see it's quite a bit thicker so that's one of the big differences here when it comes to specs a lot of this, I will say, has already been leaked, but this is, of course, effectively confirmed, sort of. See, I will say that PowerColor actually did state that, quote, the entire information provided herein are for reference only. PowerColor reserves the right to modify or revise the content at any time without prior notice. So they're saying this is for reference only, but given this was a full on page advertising this, I highly doubt that we're going to see any kind of differences by the time that it does officially release. Given this is coming from one of AMD's premier board partners, PowerColor, this is obviously about as official as it gets without a release. And moving back to specs, we can see the 7800 XT comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and 3,840 cores. Now, that number, I do have to admit, is pretty interesting because when we come over here and actually compare it even to the cut down RX 7900 GRE, you can see that it actually has way less cores. In fact, it's actually 16% fewer cores than even the RX 6800 XT. 
You can see here 4,608 to 3,840. Of course, this is RDNA 3 versus RDNA 2, but I will at least say that I wouldn't get my hopes up all that much for this GPU. Hopefully they're able to lower the price by quite a bit or something like that, so it certainly would make it worth it with that, but things are fairly similar. That 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, although the memory speed has gone up from 16 to 18, same 256 bit bus, so slightly more memory bandwidth, but not all that much. Then for the clocks, you can see that it has a game clock of 2210 megahertz and a boost of 2520. Now it obviously has a question up here, but that's just because this is a third party overclock card. So these clocks aren't gonna be the standard 7800 XT clocks. Still, it's really not all that great, even when we compare it to last gen. 2520 versus 2250. That's a little bit more, I think right around 10 or 11%, but once again, it has quite a bit fewer cores. Basically, AMD is set to release their next GPU very soon, but it's not really looking all that great. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's RX 7800 XT or are you just a little bit bummed that they may in fact be giving up the high end to Nvidia with their next gen cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.